G'day guys, it's Cliff here from Down Under. Right, well, I'm going to put together another video now on the uh, Slant Pro 15L, or rather it's about CNC turning tips and tricks. I've had that lathe since March this year, 2018, and a few little bits and pieces I've taken clips of, put them together in a video about back-to-back -back machining of larger diameter parts that don't fit through the spindle in the form of stock, um, some clips on tooling details and on setting your tooling to the to the height details one or two bits and pieces like that uh, oh yeah and a different way uh, to close your 5c collets oh uh, yeah and the um, Hallmark impact tolerant touch probe is going really well and I've just put together a website for it if you're interested it's the website the URL is hallmarkdesign.co.nz so you've got to have uh, that exact in the URL hallmarkdesign.co.nz there'll be a link on the about page in this YouTube video um, you probably won't get it by googling it yet so find the link or type in the correct hallmarkdesign.co.nz in the URL have a wee look at that website thanks guys I'll get on with it so for this job machining up the Hallmark arbors in the uh, Slant Pro 15L. I'm using alloy steel and then it's heat treated and cylindrically ground. Uh, the main tool, oh, let's have a look at the tools on the turret. Really pleased with the turret, it's been accurate and holding position really well once I got it uh, settled in and dialed in. Um, the main turning tool is a high quality Iskar WN, WN MG, that's the trigon type tool, that seems to be holding up really well. Um, then I go to a special, I don't know if you can see it over there, TTS uh, undercut tool that I ground out of ASAB 17 high grade high speed steel. Then I go to a pilot spotting drill. Then I go to a uh, main deep drill. Then I bore out the bore with that tool ground out of an old end mill high speed steel and finally threading ground out of a piece of high grade SAB 17 square tool, tool steel. So this is a process I call back-to-back -back machining. When the stock size is too big to fit through the spindle of the lathe, you cut the stock to twice the length of the part, plus a little extra for the parting and facing. And um, it's a really good way to uh, do larger work um, in a smaller lathe. Um, needless to say, the most difficult part of this operation is the internal boring. It's a deep bore. Um, 
and that's always difficult because you have extra problems with uh, swath and chip clearance, tool flex, tool wear, and uh, you really need to get exactly the right speeds and feeds and uh, tool path. You've got to hand edit it to get exactly the right type of chip clearance and be able to run it automatically. Because the whole point for me of a CNC is that it runs automatically unattended so I can go away and do something else. Otherwise, you're not a lot better off than having a manual lathe with uh, tool allocation DRO or a tool offset DRO. So, you know, the whole point of an NC lathe is to, for it to run unattended. And the hardest part to dial in was those bores. But I pretty well got it sorted now and it's running good now for quite a few parts before I need to tweak the wear offsets. That's the end result there, the TTS Arbors. And the good thing about back-to-back -back machining or back-to-back -back chucking is that you can use the same code to produce the part on the other end, the second operation. You just need to edit in the final parting operation. I've used the same procedure to produce the bodies, which are also too big to fit through the spindle. On both these parts, I can't run stock right through the spindle, so I, I just cut the stock to a little bit more than twice the length and put a spindle stop inside the spindle, inside the chuck, so that I can reference off, first of all, off the blank end of the stock, machine all of one end, then turn it round and uh, reference with that spindle stop off this end and machine the other ends using the same code but with the added in parting sequence and I don't part right through stop just short of breakthrough because otherwise it flies off and damages the part and also likely to damage the bed of the lathe um, so just within uh, say half a millimeter or so of metal then you can just zip it off with a hacksaw So the main bore is the part that I have the most trouble with because you've got a long and flexible boring bar and uh, it's difficult to have an inserted tooth boring bar for small diameter work because um, there's just not enough stiffness to take the added load of the carbide inserted tooth cutting action. You need an absolutely razor sharp cutting edge and there are some carbides uh, tips that are available but I've found that high-speed steel can be diamond lapped to a higher sharpness and um, as it wears I just keep an eye on it with a reamer and you can just feel it each part getting slightly slightly more and more worn until after you've made a few parts you just need to add a little bit on the wear offsets to allow for that. Regarding 5C collets in the spindle, I didn't buy the lever operated or pneumatic collet closer because I wanted to have a draw tube um, because I hadn't anticipated using the uh, 5C collet system very often and so I wanted something that could be removed completely quickly and just have a clean open end here so I could fit spindle stops and guide bushes and so on um, and because most of the time I have been using I've anticipated and have so far been using mainly chucks small uh, adjustable on their back plate three jaws and uh, ER32 collets for most of the work I'm doing um, but I do use 5C for certain types of work and it is a really useful system for certain types of work and to speed up uh, locking and unlocking it I've got this little manually operated spring-loaded plunger which engages with the uh, six different um, positions 
in the spindle nose just to aid quickly tightening it up. Uh, I'm not sure if I can show that easily. Uh, while I'm here, I think I've mentioned this in the rapid turn uh, series, but if you have a very small uh, piece of precision diameter, why is that not focusing? That's better. And you machine it in half like that, then you can use it to set your tool center height quite quickly. You can set it approximately right with the ruler in line with the uh, X axis. Uh, slide weight and then you can set your tools to that height and you can rotate it 90 degrees and find the center. It's a very useful little gauge to have for different types of tool setting work. Um, so yeah I've got this little spring loaded plunger that engages and if I forget to dis disengage it it just pops out with the spring and that way I can lock up uh, on here quickly press the plunger in with my thumb on one hand and the uh, little ball ended lever on the other hand and quickly tighten and loosen the uh, 5C collet system manually. So I'll just show you that little part there, uh, drawing of it in case some of you are interested in making one. Well here's the sketch that I used to make it. Just pause your screen and uh, take a screenshot if you want to want the dimensions. So I just band sawed out a segment of an arc from a piece of mild steel about five millimeters or three sixteenths thick and screwed a little bush with two cap screws um, and a little flat. Yeah that's looking down on it there. A couple of little cap screws and just ground a flat on the side of a pin there with a grub screw to act as a, a slide uh, position stop. Just put a spring under there and a little grub screw uh, on a collar on the top. Just show it to you again on the lathe. It's a bit of a rough sketch I know but I just spent an hour or two just to knock it up to try it out and it's working really well. So here we are, piece of mild steel, band sword segment screwed on to a little bush with a flat on it, two screws from the back, countersink screws and uh, a, a hardened dowel or ejector pin stub plunger, spring, there's a little grub screw there that gives you your lengthways positioning. That's all it is and it engages in any of the uh, six uh, sockets in the spindle nose. Just looking at those tool setting gauges again, that's the one I just showed you, piece of 4mm silver steel. It's also got a point on the other end um, that can be useful for setting some types of tools. A larger diameter aluminium gauge, um, that way if you've got a situation where you've got a razor sharp tool that you've lapped and you don't want to risk dulling it, um, it's much safer to use a piece of aluminium. Um, a sharp pointed piece is useful for other situations. There's that little uh, uh, pin spanner with a big ball, plastic ball on the end so you don't uh, bruise your hand up when you're tightening up the 5C collet system. I didn't mention how that little part is held on. It's held on with two M8 cap screws there's, there's a, um, a PCD row of M8 cap screws holding this end collar on the Slant Pro spindle nose. So I just removed two of them. I think the straight line pitching is 71.8 uh, is it? It's, it's on that drawing anyway. Um, and I just put in longer cap screws and uh, it, this, this little gadget can either stay there all the time or I can remove it and replace it with the shorter cap screws. It's only a couple of minutes just to, to remove it and replace it. Um, I'm not sure which of those two options I'll be using long term. It um, probably will be removed if I'm using small chuck keys and it gets in the way. But it's only a couple of minutes work to swap out those cap screws. Uh, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. 
I put a little clip here on the door micro switch and when I'm doing work that's very streamlined like this with the 5C collet and there's no chuck jaws and chuck key danger and so on um, I don't bother to open and close the door of course that's only suitable if there's no risk involved please don't run any risks and uh, do any anything dangerous with the door open you have to ex assess the risk yourself but for this type of streamlined work I'm comfortable with having the door open anyway. Tungsten carbide inserted turning tools and boring tools have come a long way in the last few years. They weren't that great in the early days but nowadays they've taken great leaps and bounds and for most turning work tungsten carbide reigns. Um, but when you get down to very small diameter boring work with uh, a, a very deep small diameter um, it, that's one of the most difficult machining situations I'm sure many of you will know and um, it's not just about what's the hardest material but also what's the best shape tool for chip evacuation what's the best stiffness of tool and uh, what's going to give you the best clearance around the chips as they're produced and uh, the smaller you get in diameter the more and more problematic high uh, tungsten carbide inserts become and you can get very small ones like this but um, I think at a certain point a deep enough hole of a small enough diameter is best tackled with high grade high speed steel and that's probably one of the few situations where high speed steel reigns and one of the reasons for that is that a good grade of high speed steel will hold a sharper fragile edge better than tungsten carbide it'll just keep that razor sharp edge uh, more intact than uh, tungsten carbide and, and you need that very low tool pressure for small diameter deep boring work where the tool is very flexible and uh, you can't have a lot of tool pressure Thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for more on the Slant Pro 15L.